Hey guys, this is Vernier for CardRunners.com, bringing you the fifth episode of Building Good Poker Study Habits, 10 Steps to More Mindful Poker in 2014 and Beyond. Today, I want to look at a post by Skilleroy, his 3K milestone post, 10 pieces of advice. I'd recommend that you read the whole thing by yourself. Uh, it's on 2 plus 2. And you can just go and you can search for Blop and, you know, search for posts by him. So these are 10 points of advice that have been helpful to him. And I definitely think that they're going to be helpful to you. So I'm just going to go through some of the highlights and give some of my own thoughts on that. So point number one is to find a study technique that works for you. And there's a lot of those. Uh, it really depends on the person, like uh, watching videos, writing things down, actively participating in forums. So experiment with a lot of different things and figure out what is the thing that gives you your best return on investment or return on time. And even if it's something that you really enjoy doing, then that is something that you might continue to go and study. And that's, that's going to be good. I, I do think that you should... Um, you should have others, uh, you should be involved with others, uh, in learning, whether it's on the forums or whether it's having grind buddies. And those are things that Skiller is going to talk about later, but put time away to study and figure out what works for you. Number two, a structure and planning, building a routine. And it's a routine that you should have for both studying and grinding. And it should be a routine that, uh, Again, that kind of fits what you do. For example, for me, it's very difficult for me to play more than 90 minutes at a time, but I have a friend who's able to do eight hour sessions, no problem. Uh, he does not drop off in concentration the way I do. When I play more than 90 minutes, I, it's like falling off a clip in terms of my, uh, my A game. Um, my A game really suffers. So figure out what works for you. Skilleroy talks about how uh, whenever he did uh, Supernova Elite runs, he would keep a very detailed uh, spreadsheet uh, with his gold and his routines, and he was able to go back and analyze those. Number three is networking, and I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, having grind buddies, ideally people that are stronger than you, but you can learn a lot from people that are not as strong as you. So if you have somebody that plays a limit below you, uh, just watching them play and noticing the differences between his game and your game or, you know, her game and your game, just having somebody in your neighborhood to talk about poker is just so eye-opening. First of all, you realize that uh, even the players that are uh, better than you still have a lot of doubts about, you know, their own game and uh, the situations they're in and it's just so helpful sweating somebody. It allows you to follow the trends in the games. Um, this one's a must. Number four, videos. It's one of the best returns on investments out there. And I can't believe how inexpensive uh, a poker site is uh, as far as, you know, giving you resources uh, for you to earn money. Um, added bonus Pros will often participate in forums, answer questions about videos, etc. And you're obviously watching this on Card Runners, and that's a great place for you to um, get started and continue learning. Number five, uh, have a main game. And uh, one of the things that I tell people is uh, Jack of all trades is a master of none. And a lot of it really depends on your personality. So if you like to uh, just put in these marathon sessions, then maybe grinding full ring is for you. If uh, you have ADD, then maybe it's not, and maybe you should play heads up. But figure out what works for you and figure out what's going to give you a high return on investment. So Skilleroy talked about how when he started playing PLO, um, he, he realized that it, it was a game with a much, much higher ceiling for him. Uh, so that was an appeal for him. Um, so figure out what works for your personalities. You can see this is kind of a trend, uh, a theme to, to this presentation is you want poker to fit you. You want poker to fit your lifestyle and you want to build your game around that. Number six, uh, focus, focus, focus. 
doing th uh, turn off distractions, um, your phone, your Facebook, your email. Studies have shown that the message that your phone sends out when you get a text or an email uh, produces the same physiological reaction as like you know crack cocaine just hearing that message is so rewarding so when you turn it off it allows you to maintain focus i included a picture of leech block which allows you to uh, turn off sites like reddit or facebook or whatever you get on uh, two plus two is a big one that just drain your time and uh, take away your attention and it it allows you to focus and not autopilot or, as, or autobot, as uh, Skiver Roy said. Number seven from the financial side, and I think that's more important. Um, so this post specifically, I think, was aimed at um, kind of the the middle and uh, upper end players. And some of the points he said is don't lend uh, people money in the poker world, and I'm sure he speaks from experience. Minimize exchange fees when moving money around and don't keep more online than you need to. I think a lot of p players um, fell into a sense of false sense of security by having a lot of money on um, full tilt and other sides that ended up going down. Right now, poker stars and the new full tilt seem like very safe places, but there's just no need for you to keep more money online than you have to. Uh, that said, you should uh, keep enough for you to be able to aggressively take shots. Bankroll management is, uh, is, is critical to any kind of long-term success in poker. And um, Skiller Roy talks about how it's important to minimize spending early on. Um, spending, what he means by that is Minimize withdrawing money from your poker bankroll and using that money to buy things that you don't really need. Obviously, you need to pay rent, you need to pay your taxes, but your money is there for you to uh, grow as a player and you'll grow as a player by taking shots at the higher level. Um, so as part, uh, the shots you take should be smart shots. So it should be when you are on feeling on your A game and you feel like a high, uh, the game higher up has, um, has some, has like a weak mark in it and you need to have a very specific exit strategy for, you know, if you end up losing, you need to be able to drop back down. But shot taking and aggressive bankroll management is how you learn and it's how you move up in limits. Number nine, coaching. If you're stuck, you can get some coaching. One of the cheapest things that you can do is get a book about self-coaching. And I think Jared Tandler's Metal Game of Poker 1 and 2 should be a part of any um, serious player's poker library and those books will give you some advice on, uh, you know, helping yourself with uh, with with your poker game. And I added on there that grind buddies can be very good informal coaches. So that's that's something Skill Roy talked about, and this this is definitely something that has been my own experience. Um, just sweating somebody and ha uh, talking to them, even if you guys are not that far uh, from limits, there's just so much you can learn. Uh, from talking with other good players that you respect. Um, and it doesn't have to be a formal coaching relationship. And finally, that brings us to number 10, is to push. It's There's a difference. Um, losing does not mean you're a failure. And I think that's what a lot of people don't realize. It's important to get out of your comfort zone in, in order to get better. And, well, I wrote, so is failure. Um, I meant to say, so is losing. Like, losing is a, if you're going to be playing poker, you're going to be losing. Uh, if you talk to any good poker player, they, they've gone through long stretches of time when they've lost. And as long as you take lessons away from that, you are going to uh, improve as a player. And if you're going to move up in limits, uh, that's where there's more money to be made and you're just gonna have to become a stronger player to do so. And if you always just play the weakest players 
and shy away from playing stronger players, um, you're never going to achieve what you're capable to, what you're capable in achieving as a professional. So that's a highlight of the 10 points that Andreas makes. Once again, I recommend that you go and you read through his whole milestone post. It's much more detailed. I just gave you some quick pointers and kind of summary of, uh, of, of what it's about. I do think you'll get a lot out of it. So go and read it, and uh, good luck at the tables. For carrunners.com, this has been Vernier.